uh, to the cycle which having the the most or the maximum uh, thermal efficiency as far as the energy conservation or energy efficiency is concerned this is the best right the best cycle for a power plant and in this case we are using this uh, kind of cycle to be applied to a steam power plant as we know this is the Q from the boiler which is Q41 this is the work output from the turbine W12 this is the Q rejected at the condenser side which is Q23 and this is the compressor work we are going to put in which is W334 okay so this is uh, the all the energy uh, the work transfer and heat transfer involved in a Kano cycle and as for the thermal efficiency or for a physical uh, component involved we have uh, for a Kano cycle we have boiler we have turbine we have condenser and we have compressor so this is our compressor right so if compressor going in right here and coming out right here so this is the boiler this is the turbine this is the condenser this is the compressor okay compressor then we know that for a turbine we are getting a work this is work one two so this is state one this is state 2, this is state 3, and this is state 4. Okay, so for a compressor, we are putting in work W3, D4. As far as the thermal efficiency is concerned, for a kind of cycle, we are going to define this thermal efficiency by using the second law of thermodynamic, which is equal to the T2 divided by T, T1. Uh, this is our T hot, uh, sorry, T low, this is our T hot. What we have learned in second law of thermodynamic, in uh, second law of thermodynamic, in the course of thermodynamic. Okay, and then uh, we have been introduced by one parameter, which is known as the thermal efficiency one. The second one is the specific steam consumption okay this ssc and this ssc we have derived last week this is 360 3600 divided by w net and in this case the unit the typical unit for ssc is in kilogram over kilowatt hour or you might also use the formula of SSC by looking at the M dot F divided by the W dot net. And if we analyze the unit for this SSC as given for as M dot F divided by the M the W dot net, the M dot F is in kilogram of a second. And the W net is in kilojoule over second. Okay, it's kilowatt. Then I convert to kilojoule over second. Then what we have right here, kilogram per kilojoule. And then we are going to have hour at the bottom as this equation. We need the SSC as per kilowatt hour so we divide by hour and then we have right here one hour is equivalent to 3600 second and what we will end up is the same formula whereby we have this factor of 3600 so we are having right here the second we are going to put right here and this will become kilowatt so again we are going to have the same factor of 3600 but right now we are multiplying by m dot sorry guys 
this is not m dot f okay this is not m dot f carry, carry away but, but on the specific fuel consumption this is only m dot okay the steam that is going into the or flowing into the cycle all right so this is uh, divided by w net w dot net so we have two equation how we can get the ssc basically based on 3600 divided by w net which is in kilojoule per kilogram or we might use the m dot divided by w dot net so we have two equation for having the specific steam consumption okay and then uh, we have look also what is being called as the ranking cycle ranking cycle with saturated vapor right from the cano cycle so this is our, our condenser this is our compressor so this is cano cycle schematic diagram of a cano cycle we have our boiler turbine condenser and our compressor okay one two three four like i mentioned before we know that for a cano cycle is always having a rectangle type of cycle and by this is one this is two this is three and this is four and it's very difficult to control the point two and point three because this is the ts diagram this is ts what we have to control is to maintain the s3 is equal to s4 and s1 equal to s2 in practical it's not an easy task okay it could not be achieved to get what is being called as s3 is equal to s4 and right here we are having s1 is equal to s2 so and another thing at point three is a mixture okay point three is a mixture mixture of saturated liquid and saturated vapor so it's not advisable to use a compressor right here because it is involving two phase okay two phase so the compressor won't be efficient or we might damage the compressor if we use a compressor right here so in order to have a very towards practical type of a cycle so we what we do is we try to change the compressor as feed water pump or pump and we allow the condenser to condense water rather than having at point three we are going to make the condensate or in the condenser we are going to have saturated liquid so we are going to allow the point three to be right here okay this is point three and then if this is point three then this is our process of compressing or in this case it's not compressed but we are going to pump to the boiler pressure so right now this is our point three this is our point four so when we create the steam condensate up to the saturated liquid and when we introduce this component as being called as the pit water pump this is still maintaining boiler this is the turbine side this is the condenser side so this whole cycle now is known as the ranking cycle okay the ranking cycle so we have this type of 
the shape of our cycle. This is called as Rankine. And this particular point right here, where the state of one coming out from the boiler is as saturated vapor. So this is called as Rankine cycle with saturated vapor. This saturated vapor is referring to the state entering to the turbine or the state of H2O, water, coming out from the boiler. Okay, so this is Rankine cycle with saturated vapor. And our schematic diagram right now should look like this for the Rankine cycle. Boiler is to see the same. And then we have our turbine, we have our condenser, and now we have our pit water pump. So this is pit water pump. And I reprint this as F. W P. Okay, so this is our pit water pump. Work coming in, work going out, our boiler, our condenser, sorry, our turbine, our condenser. Again, the state is the same one, two, three, and four. All right? So as far as the work net, right? What is the work net in this case? The work net from this Rankine cycle is equal to the W turbine minus the W for pit water pump. Okay. And then from SFEE, W12 again is H. 1 minus H2. The W34 is equal to H4 minus H3. Right? And as I explained last week, if we look at the fit water pump SFEE, I'm going to apply the SFEE at the pit water pump from process 3 to 4. So what we are having right here is the, the initial energy, which is the U3, plus the flow work at point 3 going into the pump. And then we know that the pump is going to be put in work 3, 4. And this is equal to the U3, U, sorry, U4, plus P for V4. So, as we know that the U is a function of temperature. Okay, U is a function of temperature. Usually, from 0.3 to 0.4, the temperature is about the same. There's not much temperature increase due to the state involving its water. Okay, it's water. So this, the, the compression does not give us a very high temperature after the compression process. So meaning that what we have, the U3 is about the same as U, U4. So we can cancel off this. So what we have right here is only the flow work term. So the W34 all right if we use the use this formula which is the difference in enthalpy we can also use this formula derived from the basic equation of SFEE so the w34 is equal to p4 v4 minus p3 v3 okay and I've shown that the V3 for water, right, which is equal to the Vf at the given pressure, 
the first three decimal point will show us the same value 0 0.0010001 0 0 0 0 it doesn't matter at what pressure or what at what temperature it's always the same as 0 0.001 continue right here it's still 0 0.001 as though that the value of vf at that point is constant and the value is uh, 0 0.001 which is equivalent to a density of 1000 for water okay you can see here everything is the same 0 0.001 either using the temperature table or the pressure table is the same and we have calculated an example last week and we can find that the work involved is very small okay the work involved is very very small so after saying that we are going to take out v4 and v3 as a constant so this is equivalent to 0 0.001 then we just multiply by the difference in pressure okay so that is our wt4 right and then if we look for thermal efficiency so from here we know w12 we know w34 we might we can we could get our w net and of course for a steam power plant the most important thing is to look at the quality or the performance of the efficient or the efficiency so what is the efficiency the efficiency of this ranking cycle is equivalent to the w net divided by q in in this case the q in is at the boiler side for one and q for one is equal to h1 minus h4 so in order to get what is h1 minus h4 we are going to equate this formula which is equal to h4 minus h1 and then we have another one w34 which is equal to 0 0.001 p4 minus p3 so right here we could get what is our w34 and from this formula the first formula we are going to get the h4 okay we will buy the h4 is equal to h3 plus w34 where the w34 we are going to obtain from this equation okay so when we have solved the h4 through that equation then what we could get right here is your q41 once you have your q41 then you can determine what is the thermal efficiency meaning that we are going to determine all the enthalpies you see you have one four three and also two All right to get the w turbine we need we need the two so in other words before we can determine the thermal efficiency we need to get all the enthalpies one two three and four okay in order to get the thermal efficiency okay for ranking cycle we cannot use the formula of q is equal to tds Okay, Q is equal to TDS. Everything should be using enthalpy. The Q equal to TDS, either the Q for boiler or Q for the condenser, we use that only for Carnot cycle. But once we convert to Rankine cycle, everything should be solved using all the enthalpies for every state. Okay, and of course, the other parameters which will show us the characteristic 
of the cycle is the SSC. Okay, the SSC for for right now. Okay, the SSC. We have two equation that we have learned. Okay. So that's it for ranking cycle. Basic ranking cycle or the cycle called as ranking cycle with saturated vapor. Okay, so this is a ranking cycle. So this is our cycle which shows that the point three is at saturated liquid this maintain the same maintain the same okay we have another point right here this is the point whereby the water just reach the boiling temperature of the saturated saturation temperature at given pressure Okay, but as far as the heat supply is concerned, in the boiler, this should be in the boiler side. Okay, the 4 to 1 is at the boiler side. So always we get the Q boiler as 4 1 and we use this formula H1 minus H4. We don't need the H5. Okay, we don't need the H5 no need eh? no need to get the enthalpy okay just a point just to show you that is the constant temperature line and five is at saturated liquid at given pressure okay So this is all the analysis involved. This is schematic diagram, very detailed schematic diagram. Okay, this is Q41, you see, Q451, because there is a state 5 right there. Turbine, 1, 2, condenser, 3, 4, and this feed water pump, W34. Right? Okay. All the analysis involved. W net, Q in. So this is the final equation. I would rather not using this formula. I like to derive from the very, very basic. Okay, to the very, very basic. I always use Q divided by w, uh, w divided by Q and etc. Okay. If you could remember last. Uh, uh, last uh, lecture, we did calculate the W34. Can someone recall how much we get the W34? I think 3, some, 3 point something. 3.44 or 3.99? Uh, anyone can, can, can recall? 3.99. Okay, 3.99, right? Okay, this is in kilojoule over kilogram. Very small. Okay, very small. Compare with the work from the turbine. Very, very small. That's why sometimes what we have, we neglect, okay? We neglect the pump work or the feed water pump work. Okay, it's been neglected. So once neglected, meaning what? W34, which is equal to H4 minus H3, and this is equal to zero, neglect it. And what we get is H4 is equal to H3. You see, that's why the H1 minus H4 down here. Initially, this is Q41. Then when H4 equal to H3, then it put here as H3. Right. When to neglect? Any, 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 anybody can suggest when to neglect the pump work, the pit water pump work. Anybody can give me suggestion when to neglect? Hmm. 
Anybody? Any suggestion? When to neglect the pump work? Guys, come on. Jangan tidur eh. Hmm. Any suggestion? How to, when to neglect the pump work? Not sure, doctor. Oh, not sure. All right. Okay. You can neglect the pump word when the question says so. Okay. It's most important thing. As far as the applied thermodynamic is concerned, you only neglect when the question says so. If the question does not mention anything about the pump work, then you have to calculate the pump work. Okay? So this is what I have shown just now. How to get the WT4 or in this case how to get the two, two ways of getting the WT4. First equation, second equation and this equation is particularly, particularly to get the H4. Okay, and then we have also the what we call as the uh, cycle efficiency ratio. I'm not sure this uh, efficiency ratio. I haven't done or I haven't we haven't looked right this uh, in our as far as the exam and test concern. I never seen this type of question being asked. Right, the efficiency ratio, which is defined as the cycle efficiency divided by the ranking efficiency. Okay, where the cycle efficiency is the actual efficiency and the ranking is seems to be assuming as the ideal case. But the second equation right here, yes, we do have the isentropic efficiency. Okay, we do have the isentropic efficiency and if you can remember that we learned in the, isent the entropy chapter and we have a TS diagram, this is our T, this is our S, then uh, for this isentropic efficiency, usually we only take for the turbine. Okay, for the turbine side. So, for a turbine, this is 1 to S, which is the ideal. And then we have the actual. This is the line for the actual, which is T2. Okay, and the definition of isentropic is actual work divided by isentropic work which can be written as W12 divided by W12S and what is W12? W12 is equal to H1 minus H2 and W one to S is equal to H one minus H two S. So that is the equation for the W. And in this case, we can define our isentropic efficiency for turbine is equal to actual work divided by the isentropic work. Okay? And this particular equation, usually we are going to use this equation in order to get our H2 if given the isentropic efficiency. 
all right so that is how we look at the isentropy efficiency of a Rankine cycle then we have right here is the isentropic efficiency of the peak water pump. The definition is uh, different with the vine. The definition for peak water pump, the isentropic efficiency is isentropic compression divided by the actual compression work. So this is the isentropic work which is 3 to 4s and the actual work is from 3 to 4 okay from 3 to 4 so this is what we have h1 minus h2 the h1 minus h2 is the actual compression work pumping work and the asyntropic is h1 minus h2 usually we don't ask this type of equation because it's very small. The difference is very small. Sometimes, like we said, I said, mentioned just now, sometimes this work for the compression, right? We can neglect it. Oh, sorry, this equation is for turbine. Okay, this compression, this is for turbine. And then for the the feed water pump, huh? where is the feed water pump? Don't have. Okay, you see. Uh, so this is for the turbine. So I pull up. I pull up back the question mark. This is for turbine. The compression process usually we neglect on the isentropic efficiency. Okay, and then now after saying about the isentropic efficiency, now we are going to look on the work ratio. Okay, work ratio. What is work ratio? The work ratio is the ratio of net W net divided by W gross. Okay, w net divided by the w gross so what is our w net the w net is what we have defined just now which is the w turbine minus by the w of pit water pump and what is w gross the w gross is the positive work produced by the cycle right the positive work produced by the cycle which in this case is w turbine so we are only involved in one turbine. So there is only one turbine. So that is called as the work ratio. And then we also have looked at the specific steam consumption, the SSC. Is what we have looked before. Okay. So SSC is equal to one divided by well how 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 we get this one h1 minus h2 uh, this is uh, by neglecting the pit water pump work okay this is a case of neglecting the pit water pump work you see this is the formula whereby we neglect the pit water pump work so this is only for this case as far as we are concerned, the SSC, we always use the formula of 3600 divided by W net, or this is equal to 3600 M dot divided by the W dot net. That is the formula. Okay? So let us look at the example, this example, but I'm not going to use these uh, figures. I'm going to use the figure that I have suggested uh, last week. That is uh, 40 bar for the working pressure of the boiler 
and 0 0.04 bar as the working pressure of the condenser. This is also referred as the maximum, the highest pressure. This is the low pressure side, high pressure side, low pressure side. So if you look at the TS diagram for Rankine cycle, the high pressure side is always referring to the boiler pressure and the low pressure side is always referring to the condenser pressure. Why I don't use this value in this case from the textbook is because we don't have the exact value of this in our table from Yunus know, Chingi. Okay, that is only the reason. I don't want you to end up with a lot of interpolation, interpolation because we don't have this 40 bar. 40 bar, how many kilopascal, guys? 40 bar, how many kilopascal? 4,000. 4,000. Hmm? 4, how do you get 4,000? Thanks by 100. Hmm? Thanks by 100. This is multi multiply by bar. 10 power of? 10 power of? 2. 2, 2. This is kilo pascal. So 40 times 100, we get 4,000 bar. I'm oh, sorry, 4,000 kilopascal. And here we'll get 4 kilopascal. 1, 2. Right? So if you, you refer to our table, you see this is our pressure table. 42 bar. 4,200 is no 4,200. Okay, 0 0.035 equivalent to 3.5. So we don't have any 3.5. That's why I don't use that figure. Okay, so let's look at the problem so let us uh, sketch the the S diagram for this ranking cycle this is ranking cycle with superheated paper This is should be our pressure line. Okay, we continue our process till here. And we compress right here. So this is isentropic. And then we have the isentropic efficiency. Then this should be one, two S and two. Given the isentropic efficiency for the turbine as 80%, This pressure is 4 kilopascal. This pressure is uh, 4,000 kilopascal. Okay. Can you uh, get uh, the Kano cycle? What we have did last week. What is the efficiency of the Kano cycle? Remember last week, the thermal efficiency of a canal cycle. Can, can we put down right here? How much? You calculated last week. Any, anyone please respond? 42.3. 42 42.3. Okay. What is the SSC for this canal cycle?
SSC. 4.96. 4.96 kilogram over kilowatt hour. Huh? Because you want to compare. Uh, what is the WNET, guys? The WNET for Kano Cycle? 4.59. Pardon? Uh, your voice is uh, intermittent, Rohan. Uh, 724. 7. 724. 24. 5, 5, 5, 9. 5, 9. Okay, thank you. In this case, we are not given, okay, we are not given the mass flow rate. So everything should be in per unit kilogram, which is the specific property. Okay, now one, two, two, this is three, this is four. So continue with our process. So this is the process at the boiler side. Okay. So let us get all the enthalpy first. Right? I'm not going to write down the formula for thermal efficiency, the SSC, or the double net, or maybe we can also find what is called just now. We have looked at the work ratio. Okay, the work ratio. Right. We calculate later. So right now I'm going to find all the enthalpy. Okay, all the enthalpy. So what is H1? If so you can see that the H1 is equivalent to Hg at given pressure. So, what is H1? H1 is equal to Hg at 4000 kPa. Can you guys get for me? What is the value? Yeah, guys, the value, please. Two thousand eight hundred point eight. Two thousand eight hundred. Two eight. Point eight. Two eight. Two eight. Zero zero point eight. Point eight. Thank you. Right, and then we are going to have the H two. And uh, if you look at H two, okay, we are going to find H two. The H two we are going to get from this isentropic efficiency for turbine, which is equal to. H1 minus H2 divided by H1 minus H2S. Okay, H1. Got ready. This is given. Then in order to get H2, we need to get what is our H2S. To get the H2S, we are going to use the S, 2S, and the P, 2. And the S, 2S is equivalent to S, 1. Because we know that there is asentropic expansion, 1 to S. Okay, can you guys get for me what is S, 2S right now? The S, 2S should be equal to S, 1. And what is S, 1? S, 1 is equal to? S G at four thousand kPa equal to six point zero six nine six six point zero six six nine six nine six. Thank you. And the unit is in kilojoule over kilogram. Kelvin. And this value of S to S is at the pressure of 4 kilo Pascal. Okay? 
So we need to get what H2S. You can see that the H2S is a mixture. Okay, the H2S is a mixture. So if a mixture, how to get H2S? Remember? Mixture, how to get H2S? H2S mixture. So how to get H2S? Remember guys? Pure substance? Hmm. Anybody? Anyone? H-F hmm. plus F H oh, Okay. H F 2 S plus X 2 S H F G 2 S. Right? This is at 4 kilopascal. This is at 4 kilopascal. Then we have to determine what is our X to S. How to get X to S? X to S is equal to the property that we have at the point state of 2s is the entropy so this is s to s minus sf 2s divided by sfg 2s okay so please calculate for me how much you get in x to s everyone calculate please do your work do your exercise this is all recap on the thermodynamic cost okay calculate the x to s remember point two s at the pressure of 4 kilopascal. So everything should be based on 4 kilopascal. And then you have your this is your S to S. Okay, anyone? Zero point seven zero one. Zero point seven zero one. Uh, give me four decimal point. Zero one four. Zero one, one four. Four. Okay, uh, now you get your H2S. Is it clear? Please guys, eh? for X, uh, as far as X is concerned, please always use four decimal point. Okay, because the value of X is only in between zero and one. So I suggest you use at least four decimal point to, to have an accurate answer. Okay, anyone? Oh. 
one eight two seven one eight so one eight two seven point four zero four. five okay four one eight. as far as far as the h2s is concerned usually i will uh, determine the value up to one or two decimal point because this is in kilojoule over kilogram so give me one more numbers one four one, one. Pardon? 4-1. 4 4-1. Okay. Thank you. So now we have solved for H1, H2, and also, uh, sorry, we haven't solved it for H2. Now, now we go for H2S. Okay. Isentropic efficiency for turbine is equal to H1 minus H2 divided by H1 minus H2. To S. So you have 0 0.8, you have your H1, H1, H2S, then you get your H2. Okay, please calculate what is H2. Yes, it Okay, how much? Two zero two two. Point zero nine. Okay. It, it seems that the same voice. I leave it. Yeah, leave. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But only that do. Uh, correct, doctor. I got the same answer. Okay, thank you very much. That's what I want to want to know. If you get the same answer, you let me know, right? If you got the wrong answers, different answer also, let me know. So that we don't carry on with all the wrong figures. Okay, so now we have H2. Next, what are we going to do? H1, okay. H2, okay. H2S, okay. Next is H3. So what is H3? H3 is equal to HF at Four kilopascal. What is that? Okay, refer to the TS diagram. The state of three, we know that for a reaction cycle, state of three is saturated liquid. So H3 is equal to HF at four kilopascal. 1087.4. 1087.4 okay direct from the table correct yep okay thank you now we have to get the h4 what is h4 h4 is equal to h3 plus w34 so that is the equation to get what is h4 uh, doctor sorry sorry i accidentally look at 4000 kp uh, oh, wow. Uh, for KPA, our value for HF is 121.39. 121.39. And that, that shows a, a very a reasonable figures because HF. <laughs> right? I'm sorry HF. about that. Okay, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, but bear in mind that will be the same mistake. You have the tendency 
when answering the test question and also for the exam question. Always check twice. Okay, refer to the seat, to the correct pressure, correct temperature, and get the correct value is enthalpy, enthalpy. Internet energy, internet energy. That, that's common, eh? but I think that shouldn't be the what will happen in during the test and for, during the exam. Okay, now we're going to get what is a H4. In this case, we have already get our H3. Now we have to determine what is W34. And the W34 right here is equal to 0 0.001 P4 minus P3. Okay, be careful. Uh, you, we are given the pressure in terms of a bar. But in this case, you must use this pressure in kilopascal okay and you when we look at the unit this is a, this is a meter cube per kilogram meter cube per kilogram and if we use kpa kpa is what is kilo newton over meter squared right so we cancel this with this and what we have is kilo newton meter over kilogram, which is equivalent to kilo joule over kilogram. This is what we want. Okay, this is what we want in kilo joule over kilogram because all the enthalpy is in kilo joule over kilogram. So you need to use the P4 and P3 in kilo pascal. So you will get, no mistaken, we have calculated this before. Three point. Three point nine nine. Three point nine nine. Three point nine nine kilo joule over kilogram. So, what is our H four? Which is H three plus W three four. This is a H3, 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 uh, H3, 1 to 1, 0 0.39 plus 3.99. So? so? 1 to 5.386. 38639. Okay. So, settle all the enthalpy. Okay, we have got H1, H2, H2S, H3, and H4. What do you think that the next thing that you will be asked? The first thing, usually. What, what do you think that you will be asked? If for exam, for test, what do we need from blood cycle? Hmm. What do you think? What be, will be the first question if you are the engineer who are going to design for the steam power plant, right? When you have all the enthalpies, when you have set all the pressure, high pressure, low pressure, and we have set the cycle that you are going to use, we have set the losses uh, in the turbine by using your isentropic efficiency, what is your interest next? What do you think? Is it the Rankine efficiency, doctor? No, 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 no. That is not the first point. It shouldn't be that. Uh, work let's say, let, let's say, let, let's say you have a car. You want, you want to buy the, a car, right? You want to move from one place to another place. What should be the the first parameter that you're going to look? The power output. Doctor. Yes, the power. Whether your car can carry five passenger three passenger, six passenger, right? That will be referred as the power output. But in this case, we don't have the mass flow rate. So what we are going to have, what is the W net? Okay, the W net, the, 
work that will be given by that cycle, which is equivalent to W12 minus W34. So what is W12? Which is equivalent to H1 minus H2. So what is that? We have the entropy already. Can you calculate for me? What is W12? Remember, always for the WNET, always use the actual enthalpy. Don't use H2S, okay? The H2S is just an ideal expansion process. But the real enthalpy coming out from the turbine is H2. So we are going to calculate the actual. So what is that? 778.71 Okay, so what is the W net? We have this get our W34. This is our W34. So what is our W net? This value minus this value. So we are getting about 774. How much is that? 77? 774.72 72. Thank you. Alright. So what next? Now there is the power or there is the work that coming out from the plant. So what do you think next you are going to get? What are you going to look? Hmm. What do you think? When you buy a car, right? You want to have power. Why you want have to we want to have power? To see whether the power can cope with all the load that we have. Right? Next, what are you going to look for when you buy a car? Power efficiency. Uh, the efficiency, right? How efficient your car converting the fuel to the desired output which is your work right so in this case we are going to look what is called as the quality second law of the model make the quality so the, the quality in this case is how efficient is your plan converting it to work so we are going to have the thermal efficiency in this case is for ranking cycle this is equal to the w net divided by the q in and this is equal to the W net, but the Q in is Q41. And what is Q41? Q41 is equal to H1 minus H4. We have calculated H1, we have got the H1, we have got the H4. Uh, please get the Q41. Okay, how much is that? Two six seven five point four. Pardon? Again, again. Two six seven five point four two. Okay. We now get what is our thermal efficiency. It's W net divided by Q for one time hundred.
Okay. How much there? 28.96%. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, you should use uh, at least two decimal points in terms of percentage. Okay, to get a very good uh, accuracy of the answer. What does this mean? Eh? Anybody? Apa maksud ni? What does this thermal efficiency mean? Hmm. What does this shows us? Do you think our ranking cycle is good? Hmm. Anybody want to comment? Or if this is a question for uh, explanation in the in the exam or during the test, okay, explain. You get twenty eight point nine six. So what is your, your comment, your critics on this uh, value? It's not efficient, doctor. It's not efficient. How much is efficient? <laughs> Tiba, it's, yes, it's not question, efficient. Huh? Yeah. How much is efficient? Can you get 100%? No, never, doctor. Why, why, why? Uh, because there's always uh, losses of energy to yeah, the surrounding. Because, because of second law. You see, second law, we learn into modern second law. What does second law say? This is example of heat engine. Okay, heat engine. We have the QH get from the high temperature reservoir. And then part of the QH, we are going to convert as W net. And then the balance, we are going to throw away at the low temperature reservoir. And everything should be work as a thermodynamic cycle meaning what we must reject some of the heat to the environment or the, at the temp low temperature reservoir meaning that number one we could not get 100 percent okay Tiva, there is first one because of the characteristic of heat engine and kita belajar masa second law of thermodynamic yeah yeah the, the heat engine and heat pump and the refrigerator now secondly do you remember that when we calculate for Carnot cycle at the same pressure, what is the thermal efficiency of the Carnot cycle? Can you tell me how much that? What do you get? 42. 42% then? Yes. But it's, it's about 42%. This is 28 now. Compare 28 dengan 42, it's 3 quarter from this. Betul It's about 3 quarter. So, you, if you want to comment, comment on that. Okay, comment on that. Because this is the best. The Kano cycle is the best cycle. It's the theoretical cycle. Which will give us the maximum thermal efficiency. So, if a Kano cycle can give us 42%, we are going to have 28.96. I think it's not bad. Okay, comparing with these two values, it's, it's, it's not bad. It's okay. Unless you are getting 15%. Ah, that is very bad. Okay, it's quite reasonable. But of course, it cannot be equal to Kano cycle because Kano cycle is uh, consists of everything. Every process is reversible. Okay, it's, irre it's reversible. But in this case, we have taken the turbine losses by putting in the isentropic efficiency. Okay. Now, what's next? You think? What do you think that we are going to use after this? What do you think that we are going to be asked or we are going to determine? After determining the thermal efficiency, what do you think that we can we could determine? Hmm. SSC. Why, why, why do you want SSC? Why do you want SSC? What do you think? Why do we want why do we want SSC? Hmm. What do you think? Calculate the power user. Calculate the input energy actually. Ah. Yeah. Okay, input energy. Okay, the, okay, to be to be exact, 
the SSC is actually we are going to determine how big is our boiler, the sizing of the boiler. Because usually when we buy boiler, when we design boiler, it all depends on the SSC. If we have small SSC, then meaning that we are going to have a very small boiler. If we have a big SSC, we have to make sure that the boiler could supply us enough steam. There is one. Okay, there is one. And another one, the SSC is to look to compare one plant to another plant. Let's say we have two plants, different size. Okay? We have two plants, different size. Before that, can, can we calculate this first? What is the SSC? What do you get? Calculate this first before I continue my explanation. much 4.834 sir 4.834 4. 4. kilogram over kilowatt hour yeah. meaning that we are going to make sure that the boiler will produce enough steam which is 4.834 kilogram of steam which will give us one kilowatt hour for a working time one kilowatt for a working time of one hour that is how much we have so if we have two steam power plant let, let's say let's say uh, you are you are you are an engineer a, a power engineer a steam power plant engineer you want to buy steam power plant okay you want to buy steam power plant okay you have three or four companies that give you the tender or give you all the design or the steam power plant if you want to compare from one power plant to another power plant how economy is the plant is by looking the ssc or maybe you can you want to compare from one big plant to a small big plant whether the big plant is very efficient in terms of fuel cons uh, steam consumption or the other one is efficient so this is what being called as the normalized parameter okay normalized parameter whereby you can compare big plant to a small plant because you are going to have the same power output this is the amount of steam consumption Tiba, if you buy a car if you want to compare big car small car you want to compare two liter car and one liter car. What are you going to look, Tiva? Uh, which car is uh, how to say? Which I car is the power is okay lah for me. Ah, power okay. Pa power power lah okay. Uh -huh. Now 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 you are going to look your expenses. Oh, which one saves what? more money, doctor? Ah, you not they know yeah. You not they know how much fuel is being used. Yeah. Now uh, that's why, just uh, if you remember, I I said just now I use SFC, right? Yeah. Use use I use M dot F, and this is for engine. If for steam power plant, we are looking at specific fuel consumption, but for a car, we always look at the specific fuel consumption. The unit is still the same. The formula is still the same, but we are going to look in terms of the usage of the fuel because that is our expenses actually. Same goes for the SSC, our expenses, how much that we are going to heat up. Okay, the second thing. The first one is to get whether the boiler, we can cope with the SSC. Second one is to look from one plant to another plant. The third one is to look the water storage okay the water storage uh, anybody have the experience of uh, looking at the, the uh, combustion lab the e04 the e04 saya tak tahu sama ada you pernah tengok tidak e04 the, th the thermodynamic lab nearby okay pernah pernah makan pernah makan kat kedai kedai restoran uh, apa kedai gerai makan sebelah sungai tak 
Ya. Eh, you all ni tak pernah datang kampus ke? Ah, uh, I tak pernah datang kampus lagi dekat. Oh, ada. Pernah datang. Ha. Ni kan kita ada gerai tepi sungai tu kan? Ada KM. Ha. Ada. Kalau you tengok betul-betul dia surrounding, you akan nampak lesang, ada satu tangki besar tau. Nampak tak? Hai, ada hai, the high tank. Ada satu tangki besar tau. Yang purpose um, selalunya orang uh, kalau staff kita dia park kereta kat bawah tu, dia park motosikal kat bawah tu, kat bawah tangki tu. It's very big big tank. That tank actually is the water supply for the boiler plant dekat kita punya lab. You can see, you can see how big is the plant. You can see how big is the tank. That is much what that is the how much water that we have to store in order to run the steam power plant. So this is very important. This parameter is very important because you have to size your water storage. That's why we need the SSC. Okay. So after saying that, what what do you think next? We are going to be asked. You want you want to know from this plan. What do you think? The next one you are going to look at the work ratio, which is equal to the W net. Divided by the W gross, which is equal to the W net divided by the W turbine, which is equal to the W net divided by W one two. Okay, and this W one two, we just calculate the W one two just now. I'm not sure, but I just put the formula the H one. Minus H2. I think we have calculated that. Yeah, kita dah calculate this one. So, get the W, the work ratio. So, how much is that? So, 0 0.44, uh, 0 0.9945. So. Ah, 0 0.99. 0 0.99. 45. 45. It's about 1, kan? Yes. Uh, because because your your W net is about the same. Eh? Because your W net is equal to the W turbine minus W pit water pump. The pit water pump is only 3.99. Very small. You see? Uh, this is what you have. That's why sometimes for steam power plant, we don't ask the work they show. Because it's about 1. Okay? It's about 1. When you neglect your pit water pump work, when you neglect the pit water pump work, what is your work ratio? What do you think? One. Hmm. One. In this case, kalau kita neglect, okay, we neglect pit water pump work, the work ratio is equal to one. Okay, because the work, work net is equal to work turbine. You can get one. Okay? So, but in the textbook, you already been said that. Okay, I think, I think that is what we are going to have. We are, we, what we are trying to look for when we have a steam power plant. This is all the parameters which is our interest. How much work coming out? How much heat going in? What is the SSC? What is the thermal efficiency? And what is the work ratio? Okay? Now, next thing, how do we increase the work output? Okay, macam mana kita nak tingkatkan dia kuasa? Let, let's say, we, kita, kita nakkan kuasa. Okay, kita nakkan work output. That is our interest. This is heat engine, kan? This is type of heat engine, steam power plant. Right now, kita nak tingkatkan dia punya Kerja, the W net. 
What do you think that we can do? So this is our original cycle. So what can we do to increase the work? Ingat ya, saya tanya you all, how we are we going to increase the work output? The work output in this case is the W net. How can we do that? Hmm. Anyone? You have idea how could we? Ingat eh? Ingat. Kalau kita nakkan work output, as far as the first law of thermodynamic is concerned, the first law of thermodynamic about energy balance, about the energy in equal to energy out. So, kalau kita nak tingkatkan the W net, meaning that we have to increase the power input or the energy input to the, the plant. So, when we increase the power, in, the, the energy input, in this case, energy input dekat mana? The most energy input. Is it like a boiler, doctor? Yes, boiler. Right? How can we increase the energy input to the boiler? Increase the temperature? Increase the temperature. You want to increase the temperature. How about the pressure? We maintain the, the pressure. Uh, increase both, sir. Uh, satu satu lah dulu, tiba. Janganlah uh, tamak. Jangan tamak lah. Satu satu <laughs> dulu. Huh? Uh, we increase, we try to increase the temperature. Okay, now we increase the temperature. What happened? Aha, uh -huh, kita increase the temperature. Initially was saturated vapor. Now we are going to increase getting higher and higher. Remember, how much is this uh, temperature? This temperature, how much? Guys, come on. Upura. Baru lulus. Temu dari. Yes, about 373 degree C. We try to increase. And maybe go to 400. Maybe go to 400 degree C. Maybe you go for 500 degree C. Who determine the 400 and 500? What? element what component will determine this 400 and 500 hmm. it's all depend the fuel that we use okay the type of fuel we use we know that the combustion of fuel have their maximum temperature so all depend on that right so if we increase this temperature what happened to the expansion process? Can you see? What happened to the expansion process? Yes, we are going to have more work. If this is our 2, this is our 1, this is a 1 prime, 2 prime. This is 1 double prime, this is 2 double prime. Yes, we are going to increase the work because it depends on the delta H. Okay? But it's all depend on the maximum temperature that could be attained by the fuel that we use. Now, ada fuel yang tak boleh sampai 500. Ada fuel maybe maximum dia akan sampai kepada 600 saja. That is one. Another one is all depend on our combustor yang ada dalam boiler. We cannot just simply increase the temperature. Maybe our boiler cannot stand with that type of temperature. Okay, nanti dia meletup lah. Okay, nanti dia meletup. So, it depend on that parameters. Okay, but basically, we could increase the work output when we use what we call as the Rankine cycle with super heat, uh, superheated vapor. Alright, so if we look in this case, we are going to have what is being called as Rankine cycle with 
super heated paper. Uh, this is the name of the cycle. The 3, 4 is the same. As far as the formula is concerned, it's the same. But the way you get your enthalpy is different. Because right now, your 0.1 and 0.1 prime and 0.1 double prime at, is at superheated vapor. And then another thing that you have to be, be careful is this point. You see, of course, when you start at 1, you will end up at 2 for the turbine. For sure, if you look here, you are going to have saturated vapor. Of, of, of course, state 2 will be mixed here. But when you use higher temperature, which is at the superheated vapor phase, then you have to look what is actually the state of 2 prime. You have to look actually what is the state of 2 double prime based on this input temperature. Okay? So you need to prove the state. Number 2, state 2, no problem. Of course, you will get mixture. But 2 prime, 2 double prime, you don't know. It all depend on this. Okay? All depend on this temperature. Okay. So can we have that type of pressure? Let me see whether at 400 and 0 0.4 is there being tabulated at superheated. It's 4000 kPa, meaning that we have 4 megapascal, right? 4 megapascal. Uh, 4 megapascal. So this is our 4 megapascal. Next line. Okay, not, not this one. This is 4 megapascal. And then we have three, 400 here, we have 500 here. Okay, and this being tabulated. Okay. And then how about uh, 0. Point, uh, about 0. Point, uh, uh, 4 kilopascal? 4 kilopascal is 0. Point 0.04, correct? Megapascal. 4 kilopascal divided by 1000, 0, 0.04. Correct? It's okay. Guys. Hello guys. Uh, 0, 04 tak ada nampak. Uh, 0, 04 tak ada. Kena intercooling kan doktor? Intercooling? What is intercooling? Uh, to dapat like the value for 0, 0, 0.04. No no no. I, I I just want to check. Bila kita guna nanti 0, 0, 0.04. Right. Kita nak kena check sama ada, ada tak data 0 0.04 dekat superheated? Oh, okay. Uh, kalau, kalau tak ada, nanti kita akan end up with a lot of interpolation. Ah, saya, okay. saya, saya, tak nak, saya tak nak berlaku yang itulah. Eh. Ah, okay. 0 0.4 megapascal is equivalent to 0 0.04 kan? Oh, tak ada. Eh. Oh, tak ada, maybe we can guna, kita guna online punya data. Eh? Kita guna online punya data lah kalau tak ada. So, kita continue with that uh, example, with the same pressure, high pressure, low pressure. Okay. Uh, you nak guna 400 ke 500? Kita guna 400, eh? Let us look at uh, 400. Okay, 400 a bit higher than this, lah, eh? So, maybe, let me clear the canvas first. Okay. Please catch. TS diagram. So we are going to use the ranking cycle with superheated vapor. And before that, right, I want to show you how we achieve superheated vapor. Okay. Two type of uh, heating process. Eh? Two type of heating process. Uh, we are going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. As far as we are concerned, we only need that. But right here, extra 5 NC is given. As for the heat supply is concerned, the heat supply is 4, 5, 6, 1. Right. In the boiler, okay, kalau kita masak air tau, dalam boiler, kalau kita masak air, selagi ada air, 
Okay. Selagi ada air, maknanya sekarang ni kita akan dapati bahawa dia adalah saturated. Dia punya vapor side tu is saturated vapor. Okay, let's say let's say I I draw here the level the level of water. Okay, this is the level of water. Dalam boiler tak boleh kering eh. Dalam boiler dia mesti ada air tau. Mesti ada liquid. Okay, mesti ada liquid. Okay, mesti ada liquid. Oh, sorry. Saya tak boleh buat begitu. Saya kena bawah sikit daripada titik. Bawah sikit eh. Titik mana? Okay. Let's say this is the level. So, what happen in this case, yeah, air tengah boiling tau. Air tengah boiling dalam dalam boiler. It's, 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 it's boiling. Kita ada steam yang akan terbebas. Okay. So, this is our steam. And this steam is called as saturated steam. And this steam is being flow into a drum and this drum is filled up with saturated steam with saturated vapor so this is saturated vapor whereby this part is saturated liquid dalam boiler tak boleh ada tak boleh kering eh dia sentiasa ada mixture ada saturated vapor ada saturated liquid kalau dalam boiler kalau dalam boiler tu habis air the liquid finish and then the boiler will switch on the alarm. Eh? Kalau air tu habis, right, dalam boiler, air tu tak ada liquid tak ada, nanti boiler tu akan bunyi alarm. Very 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 loud alarm. Ha, masa masa alarm ni on, the boiler man will run to the boiler room. What happen? What happen? What happen? Ha, tengok tengok air kurang. Okay, it's very dangerous eh. Kalau tak ada air, kita dekat kan Malaysia ni ada ke the super heated uh RC? Eh, it's a typical, it's a typical design. Oh, okay, okay. Ah, it's common. You need, you need to increase the the temperature of state one because you want more work. Okay, you want more work. Okay, so after in the boiler, the boiler only produce saturated vapor. Remember that, eh? The boiler only produce saturated vapor, whereby we only get this maximum from the boiler. At point six. So, if you want to get superheated vapor, we must use a device, a component called as superheater. And this superheater usually powered by electrical. It's a heater itself. And then you get superheater or superheated vapor. Then you can increase the point one. So, from point six to point one, this is being done in the super heater. The super heater could be drive or could be powered by gas or by electric heater. Okay, just to increase more temperature in order to get more work. Okay, so this is the case. Right, nah, kita ada hot well kat sini. Eh, hot well ni sebenarnya adalah untuk uh, apa yang dikatakan sebagai kita nak buang sebahagian daripada steam daripada air panas kita nak buang dekat hot well uh, this is called as a blow by ya yeah? blow by process yeah? sebab you tahu kan air kadang-kadang air ni bila kita panas 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 dia, dia dia macam cycle bila kita panas panaskan dia and then you know that dalam air ni ada mineral okey ada mineral ada kalsium ada magnesium, ada potassium. This mineral, kalau dia in contact dengan high, very high surface temperature ataupun dia in contact dengan surface temperature which which possess very high temperature, this mineral akan jadi macam apa tau? Dia akan jadi macam solid. ya? Yeah? Dia akan jadi macam solid. Contohnya macam kita punya kettle kat rumah lah eh. Kita, kita electric kettle. Kalau tak, saya tak tahulah sama ada you ada pengalaman beli kettle ke, ataupun tidak. Tapi for sure, kalau you beli kettle, beli kettle, kalau you buka 
dia punya cover of the kettle when you look at the heating element selalunya masa baru beli dia berkilat tau dia polish it's very shining polish tapi bila you dah gunakan quite some time maybe one month or two months you akan dapati macam ada ada macam ada satu selaput putih macam powder tau dekat atas the element this deposit yang ada pada element heating element dalam kettle ni that is the mineral yang ada dalam air yang telah jadi solid yang telah jadi solid ya yeah? because in contact with the heating element which have a very high temperature jadi solid and this solid dia akan build up build up build up tau dia akan dia akan bertambah 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 sehingga kan satu ketika nanti you punya kettle tu boleh meletup Kenapa dia meletup? Because the heat want to transfer but it could not transfer the heat to water because of this deposit. Ya. Yeah? Ah ni this is called as Pauling factor. Ya, yeah? Pauling factor. The this will increase the temperature of the element sampai dia meletup. Faham eh? Ah that this, this how this is why why we need to blow by. Ya. Yeah? We need to blow, sorry, not blow by. Eh. Kita, the, the, the istilah adalah blow down. Yeah? Uh, this is where we do the blow down. Yeah? At this part. Blow down. Okay. Uh, ini sedikit lah penerangan kenaan dengan apa yang selalu berlaku. Eh. So kita kena ada blow down. Jadi kita buat blow down. Meaning that we are going to reduce a lot of mineral yang ada dalam air. Eh, sebab this mineral is very harmful to the boiler tube. Okay. So sekarang ni, jadi inilah kita punya super heater. Right? Our super heater. So kita kena ada satu elemen. But as far as the heat supply is concerned, the supply of heat pada kita punya cycle is from 4 up to 1. Yeah? From 4 up to 1. So this is the beginning of heat supply for up to before entering the turbine. Regardless lah. Yang kita tak perlukan H5, kita tak perlukan H6. We only need 1 and 2. Okay? So let us continue with our schematic uh, DTS diagram for our turbine and for our cycle. Apa nama cycle ni? Hmm. Apa nama cycle ni? Rangkaian cycle with super heated. Yes, with super heated vapor. Hmm. Okay. With super heated vapor. So, let us put our tempi, our, our, our pressure right here. This is our pressure. We decided to go for 400. So, maknanya kalau sini T73, 400, a bit above lah eh. So, this is 400. This is 4,000 kilopascal. And then, eh, we have our condenser. Okay, now, this is the tricky part. This is the tricky part. I don't know whether the end of expansion process is going to be mixture or sup, still superheated vapor. But I must start from something. Okay, I must start from something. So if I sketch this type, uh, nampak macam seolah-olah dia akan end up dekat mixture eh. Let it be. Tak apa, let it be. But we must prove the state too. Cara saya lukis sekarang ni, as though that is mixture. But I don't know. Whether it's mixture. Jadi saya akan put this mark right here. So this is point two. This the mark. Whether it's true or not, saya tak tahu. Tapi for sure, state one is superheated vapor. Kenapa state one superheated vapor? Hmm. Kenapa state one is superheated vapor? More than critical point. Yes, more than critical point. Ya, kita dapati bahawa T1 is greater than T crit. 
Therefore, it must be superheated vapor. Or, or we could use also the T set. The T1 is greater than the T set at 400, 4000 kPa. Therefore, superheated vapor. It's up to you lah eh. You nak gunakan which one? Nak gunakan T1 greater than T crit or T1 greater than T set. It's up to you. But the point two is a big question mark. So I want to show you how do we determine state two. So now we look at state two. Whether we have the right state or not. So we must base on something which is the P2 which is equal to 4 kilopascal. And we know that the S2 is equal to S1. Right? So get the S1 for me. 4000, 0 uh, 0.4 megapascal, 400. 4 megapascal, 4 megapascal, yeah, 400. So this is our entropy. 6.7714. Kilojoule over kilogram Kelvin. Okay. So what do we do next? Look at 4 kilopascal. 4 kilopascal. Four kilopascal saturated water. Four kilopascal on jauh ya. Yeah, four kilopascal. Okay, we are our interest is this the entropy because we have S two. Okay. So this value is at 4 kilopascal. This is our SF. This is our SFG. This is our SG. Okay. So what we can what can we say about S2? Can we say about S2? Between SF and Yes, 6.7 is in between this and this. So we write here the S2 is greater than SF2 and less than SG2. Therefore, mixture. So apa yang kita lukis ni betul lah. Ya. Yeah? So apa yang kita lukis ni betul. It's correct. So padam lah. Kita mark. Because we have proven. The point of two. Okay. So after this. What do you want to do? Of course. It's a routine. For a steam power plant. To get all the entropies first. Before you answer the question. It's up to you lah eh. You nak gunakan cek data support atau tidak. It's up to you. So one. Two. Three. Four. Again. This is at. Four. Kilopascal. So we don't involve any. Superheated vapor. At, at point two eh. So this is our actual. This is how you prove it back. You prove it. Okay. Now, let's say T1 tu adalah 600. Let's say eh, 600. So what do you get? 
let's say the P1 is equal to 4,000. And then the, I just have that tower, I can apply up here. Uh, let's say this is uh, 600 DTC. Yeah, I do, yeah, 600. Then the capacity. Okay, the S1 is equal to, let's say, and let's see, yeah. Uh, so I put right here. Lah. Let's see. This is our condition of superheated vapor. 600. Six, I like 600. Uh, 4 megapascal. 4 megapascal. 4 megapascal, 4 megapascal. Let's see. 4 megapascal, this one. Okay, other 600, eh? 4 megapascal, 600. So this is our entropy. Eh, sorry, this one. Okay. Nampak tak keluar? Untuk Untuk Bacakan saya Apa nilai dia? 737036 737036 7.3706 Okay ha, Kalau kita lihat sini nampak eh this is our SD kan? I still, it still uh, mixture. Okay, point two is still mixture. Yes, but it's still in between. So, berapa yang akan menghasilkan more than eight point? Kita nak more than eight point five. Eight point five. More eight point five. And this one, one thousand two hundred. Eh, ah, kalau kita dapat begitu, maka kita akan dapat di ada adalah merupakan superheated vapor and eh, kat end of the expansion process eh? so this uh, will give us uh, state 2 uh, still uh, mixture eh? so I don't think that I'm going to get more than 1200 eh? mana ada uh, dapat still more than 1200 eh? terlalu bahaya eh? ok guys so I think that's it for today's lecture then uh, let me look at the attendance